What up, it's your boy Reason, and you tuned in to Hot New Hip Hop. Growing up in uh, Delamo, um, I was actually born in South Central, but I moved to Carson at a young age, so uh, it just gave me like a childhood, the, the chance to actually do uh, other things. In South Central, I couldn't really go outside, didn't really have much freedom. Uh, so Carson is kind of like that that mix of, uh, of the hood in a way, but still, you know, good enough for you to be able to get out and, and do things, whether it's uh, uh, not having to be back by a specific time or whatever the case may be, or, or uh, catching the bus to school instead of getting a ride. Uh, just really giving you like the freedom to be able to actually have a childhood, but uh, yeah, yeah, I love Carson. Yeah, I was big, big in sports. Like um, I didn't get into music until a little bit later in life. Uh, even though I always had music interests, uh, but I was big in sports. I played basketball my whole life. Uh, went to school for basketball. That's how I went to college, um, and uh, just that, and just like kicking it with the homies. We used to just go and do shit, whatever it was that kids would get into and get in trouble for doing it you know what I mean but uh yeah heavily in sports I play uh basketball my brother played football uh I actually double majored in business management and sports management I thought I was going to be a sports agent and then I figured out I had to go to law school and I was out I was heavily into so my parents didn't let me listen to rap like hardcore rap until I got old enough to just sneak and listen to it and they gave up on that um but the first person I got into was Ludacris though and that was like around chicken and beer so that was like my favorite, favorite. Uh, yeah, that was my favorite rapper in the world. Like I would have argued you to death that Ludacris was like the greatest. And then, um, and then I went to this heavy Jay-Z stage for about three or four years. And then like I feel like almost everybody else, I just poured myself into Wayne's catalog for like the next six. Wayne had that crazy run where he was just like, yeah, you feel me? Undeniably the best rapper on the planet for like six, seven straight years or whatever. So, uh, but yeah, early on, like chicken and beer, ludicrous, yeah. I like West Coast rappers, like, you know, and I've, I've listened to them, but I'm very, and that's part of the reason why I love New York. Like I'm very like, East Coast based, like with the exception of Ludacris, all of my favorite rappers are on the East Coast. You know what I mean? Jay Z, Fabulous. Uh, I was even listening to Lloyd Banks back in the day, Cassidy. Like all of my favorite, yeah, like yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I listen to people that had bars, and I feel like West Coast music has always kind of been more about like the the swag and the the feel of it, because it's like it's like L.A. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's chill, it's smooth. Like that's kind of what L.A. is in a way, and so. Um, I started rapping like four years ago. Uh, I was in uh, uh, I was in Iowa. That's where I played ball at, and I was bored out of my mind. I had a MacBook and I, I was freestyling. Wayne just dropped a. I want to say it was D5, but it could be D4. Uh, but it was one of those the dedications, and um, I was just freestyling in my MacBook um, all the time, just like just to have fun and kill time. And I just fell in love with it. Like it was a way for me to be able to like get stuff off my chest and whatever I was going through, be able to actually talk about it. And um, Better Days, which is out, was actually the third song that I ever wrote. And that was like when I wrote that song was when I just fell in love with music. That was the moment when I was like, yeah, I want to do this. Like, I want to do this for real, for real. It was awful. <laughs> it was a, a song called uh, Well Rounded. And I was like rapping about the fact that I was a better rapper than everybody else in every single different category. It had like five verses. I don't know what I was thinking. It was like five verses, five hooks. It was like an eight minute long song. Nobody would ever listen to that. Um, I worked quite a few. Uh, I worked at Target. Um, uh, I heard the word, I heard, got word that I was gonna get fired, so I quit, thinking pridefully. I wish I would've rethought that I could've got unemployment. Um, and then um, I worked uh, uh, at a winery in Beverly Hills. I hated that job. Worked at Forever 21 Corporate for like four days, got fired. Um, and then I was working at a place called Texas. And that was where I was working at last before I got, yeah. Now I, I actually loved that job. Like I, that, I thought that's where I was gonna be. Uh, when I first got signed, Top put us all um, in this studio in Santa Monica. And um, he told me like, yo, you need to be in there every single day. So I was in the studio like every day for like two months straight. And um, uh, Dot was always in there, but I never knew what he was doing though. He would just be sitting in the studio and I would just be like, what the fuck is he doing? But I, he was just like there listening to music. And at this point I didn't know he was working on the Black Panther album. I would just walk in there and hear beats and random artists and be confused, but it's Kendrick, so I'm not gonna ask any questions, you know what I mean? And then uh, one day Top came by and um, 
uh, he told us that he was working on the Black Panther soundtrack. I was like, oh, okay, that's crazy. And then uh, we were in there till like four in the morning. Usually Dot used to leave around 12 or so. And he was just there. And I was, so I went in there and I just asked him, I was like, yo, what are you, why are you here? Like, why are you just been laying on the couch with Soundwave for like three hours? What are you doing? And he was just like, uh, you know, I'm working on this. Uh, I'm working on this this soundtrack. I'm trying to turn it in. But this rapper, you know, I won't say his name, hasn't turned in his verse yet. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. And I went back to the studio to pack up. And then next thing I know, Top is walking in with a hard drive. And it was just like, yo, play this, you know, play this. And I played it. I was like, that's crazy. He was like, yeah, if you can put a verse on it, like within the next two days or so, then, you know, maybe you can potentially make the project. And so instead of packing up, we unpacked everything. I did my verse right there, like within the next 20 minutes. And uh, when Top came back just to say bye or whatever, we were just like, you want to hear it? And it ended up working out. So, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. One thing uh, that I picked up from Kendrick specifically is uh, I used to write everything, like, um, like from the beginning. And I'm not sure if Kendrick writes or not, but I, I believe he does. But what he does first is uh, uh, lays like scats and reference tracks over and over. So he'll just lay on the couch or sit down with a microphone while the beat is playing and just say stuff. It's not even words, but just getting a cadence. Yeah, exactly. And getting how, and then he'll just go back and listen to it over and over and over. And he might have 20 minutes of recording of that just to find the best, very, very best pockets and then fill in the words. Um, for me, that doesn't work on every record, but it does work a lot. And I've adapted that to my, my writing methods. You know what I mean? It's just as far as like recording it and whatnot. Definitely just because of like the, the, the family type feel of it. Like I had um, other label uh, meetings or what, what, what not uh, beforehand uh, TDE kind of came honestly out of nowhere and it happened quick like I met uh, Musa from TDE and then like a month later I was signed like it was very fast it was very fast but all the other you know, uh, meetings that I had it was super businessy everything was about numbers and 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 you know following it and just like a lot of shit that I didn't care nothing like about music like we would play talk about music for like 10 minutes and then we would talk about following in numbers and YouTube and brand and what your hair looks like and just stuff that like I'm just like I don't even understand how this stuff like how can you think about signing an artist that has all these things but doesn't have the music but you know what I'm saying like it, does, it didn't make sense to me and so TDE it was the literally the polar opposite like it was all about the music and who you are as a person um didn't really care about the follow. Like, we're TDE, we can get you a follow, and it's not a big deal, you know what I mean? But if you have the music and the talent, then, you know, we're going with that. And then on top of that, it's just a family-type feel. Like, if you're in the studio with these dudes, it's like we're just constantly cracking jokes. Everybody's chilling. It's, it's love. It's not – you don't feel like you're at work. You don't feel like you're trying to make somebody like you for whatever reason. It's just a very, very – family type feel label everybody just gets along and it's cool and then also td is very very competitive which i like um it's it's a supporting competitive way where we all support each other but you're still trying to exactly you're still trying to like push each other and i think that that's a big reason why they've succeeded over the years is because everybody pushes each other yeah man top is is man top is a, a a funny but like amazing dude just as far as like the things that he's been able to accomplish but when I first met with Top and I played him music, we played music for like an hour and Top did nod his head once. He was just on the phone, texting. He would like reach over and tell Musa a joke. And I'm like sitting here nervous, sweating, like playing my best music that I, he's not nodding his head once. And then I play one record and he puts the phone down and he starts nodding his head. So at the time I'm like, okay, cool, he likes this record, but I'm also thinking, okay, this is the only record he likes. Like clearly I'm bombing this interview, whatever this is. Uh, but uh, and then I left and he ended up texting Musa later telling him like, like, no, I really like that kid. But I think that that moment really, really kind of shows who Top is just because he's very he's always like strategy and two, three steps ahead. He's never going to let anybody have like the the advantage over him or his business or the artist. So not to say that he was trying to have the advantage over me, but he was he wasn't going to give me too much in just me being able to read him. You know what I mean? And. I think that that's the way that he moves his label. Like, you never really know what's going on with TDE until they want you to know. It's very strategic. It's very um, um, uh, focused on being two, three steps ahead. You know what I mean? And I think that's why he's had success the whole time. 
Uh, I'm working on an on a album, but Top really felt like it was important for people to understand why he signed me. So we went back and just remixed, remastered it. He wanted it to be raw. We didn't bring in a bunch of musicians. And it was just me sitting in my room listening to YouTube beats and making a project. You know what I mean? Exactly. The real story. And so he wanted the fans to be able to see that and understand why they signed me. So the project that on there, you have it all YouTube beats for the most part. It's a couple producers that I actually knew. And um and we're gonna re-release that and then in the meantime I'm still putting the finishing touches on my album so that way that can be like the first T D E production that we release. I think you're gonna be able to A see a lot of growth in it. Um but also I think it's gonna be very, very soulful and story driven, if that makes sense. Like soulful, very real. I think it's gonna be very uh visual. Um, I think when they listen to that Reason Project, you're going to be able to, with almost every record, see stories or a part of your life that maybe you could relate to that went with that. A lot of the, the records are very, very visual, whether it's a turn up record or it's just a, a you know natural boom bap record. It's very, very visual. A, I like uh, things that sound like real instruments. Like um, I don't I don't like uh, like stuff that doesn't sound like the authentic even if we're going to play it through a computer of course i really like soulful type like church type you know what i mean so any record i have they don't all sound like that but they have some type of feel to that and then i've been working with some great uh producers uh cal banks uh dj swish i'm really excited for uh people to hear the stuff with me and swish just because he works with uh yg a lot and i think that people have the misconception that like Swish is like a like he plays everything. Yeah, like Swish, plays, yeah, plays. exactly. Like he's not just this you know DJ that can only make one sound. That's what I'm trying to say. Like he can he can really play. So I've been working with a lot of dope dope producers that you know and being in there from the beginning. I never did that before. Like I used to just grab the beat. I'm now actually there while they're creating. So that's a whole nother process. For me and Swish started off cooking up in a, a garage in Compton, and we were making music. And then Swish kind of took off. And he would still work with me, but I even told Swish because, you know, you're trying to grow your career. And if I'm a real friend, you can't be spending seven hours with me when you're trying to, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. So I just pretty much told him, like, I'll, I'll catch up. You know what I mean? Like, when you got stuff, send it to me, but I get it. Like, I'll catch up to you. So it was crazy to be able to double back three years later, and it makes sense now. You know what I mean? So that's my guy. Uh, I want my legacy to be five years down the line. Of course, I want to be a household name. I want to be... Uh, uh, one of the bigger artists in music, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm already on the best label, in my opinion. Um, but the main legacy I want to do is just be somebody that people know, A, gave them truth, but also I want to really be an advocate for pushing other artists to work with each other. I feel like uh, in music, sometimes there's this crab in a barrel mentality. So I really want to be the one. I, it would be a big legacy to me if in five years there were six up and coming artists that everybody was going crazy about and four of them people first heard because they did a record with me if that makes sense or because I shouted them out in some type of way like I want to be the person to start bridging that gap and giving dudes opportunities because I know what it feels like to be dope and not have a shot like and just be sitting there hoping and begging that somebody gives you an opportunity and nobody will because they have this crab in the barrel mentality.